Batman is one of the most beloved characters in the history of popular culture, and that didn't happen by chance. There are a lot of reasons we love him so deeply. There is, of course, the meme level Batman is awesome reasoning. He's a ninja, a detective, a scientist, and an astronaut. He drives a fast car, has a badass plane, a big house, cool computers, and he gets to kiss all the pretty girls. The list of his qualifications and accomplishments reads like a bucket list composed by our collective pre-adolescent selves. He is everything we were going to be before we became worldly enough to know that the human body and mind had limitations. But being just awesome doesn't enshrine you in the collective popular consciousness. There are graveyards worth of characters and properties that were once considered cool, but are now forgotten. So what makes Batman different from Johnny Quest or Duke Nukem or the Thundercats? What part of the character's makeup ascends him from popular to immortal? There isn't a single bullet point or thesis statement that's going to 100% answer that question. But the theme I think connects the character so deeply to us is the processing of trauma. Bruce Wayne has his life completely demolished at a point in his development where he is not fully rooted in the world. It is the worst possible thing that could happen at the worst possible time. But rather than toss him into a life without direction or nudge him down a pit of self-hate, the trauma transforms him into the perfect actualization of what a, quote, man can be. Deriving meaning from tragedy has been a core theme of Batman from the start and has been a common story skeleton to Scott Snyder's current run. With Batman number 48, Snyder brings this theme front and center and lays it out for the reader in a transparent and original way. At the end of the Endgame arc, both Batman and the Joker were killed. Jim Gordon became the new Batman and got entangled with the new villain, Mr. Bloom. Then, through fairly convoluted comic book logic, both the Joker and Batman were brought back to life, though neither had any memory of who they were before. In issue 47, Bruce Wayne began to remember who he was. Unsure of how to digest the fact that he used to be Batman, Bruce seeks peace on a lonely bench in a park. But as he is chewing on the idea of whether to return to his former life, a man sits down next to him. That man is the still amnesiac Joker. Issue 48 opens on this scene. Bruce wrestles with the reality of his former life, while the now sane and mostly normal Joker makes small talk with him. The Joker talks about waking up with no memory and trying to build back his life. He talks about how he felt lost, how he searched for purpose, and how traumatic it was to rebuild a life without the shadow of a foundation. He contemplated ending his life, but the calmness and peace he found sitting in the park pushed him to not quit and to become someone new. The Joker asked Bruce to protect this park, to not let it become the polluted and desolate place it once was. Bruce responds to this by saying, if it goes back, what was the damn point? If it doesn't last, if it all just falls apart in the end, and if it's not more than just, just now, why does it matter? Maybe it's just some big, and then he trails off. In this statement, Bruce is surrendering to the chaos of life. He is saying because good and evil fluctuate and wrestle for control, that the whole battle is meaningless, that there isn't a point to it all. This philosophy has been soliloquized about before in Batman comics, though it usually comes from a different character. The close of Endgame saw Joker and Batman waking up with no memory and being forced to rebuild a life, career, and worldview. For the second time, both men must form an identity in response to great trauma. However, it appears this time their methods of healing are inverted. Bruce has chosen to see what happened to him as a product of a random and absurd world. A world that is slave to chaos. He is embracing the worldview of the Joker. Snyder communicates this to us in the last word of the speech I quoted earlier. It's never said, but rather implied. Maybe it's just some big joke. As always, the Joker fulfills his role by representing the foil to Batman's current credo. When he was presented with the exact same trauma, he found meaning. He denied chaos and saw what happened to him as a calling. That can be seen most clearly in the Joker's response to Bruce's nihilistic speech. Maybe. Or maybe that's all there is. We just make the most of what we have and it carries us forward. We were here. And that's enough. So even if it goes away or goes back to something ugly, 
maybe that's okay. The Joker is making the most of his time and his experiences. He is harvesting good from his pain. This conversation has been going on while Mr. Bloom parades a defeated Jim Gordon around Gotham. At this moment, the carnage going on around the two men becomes known, and the time for Bruce to decide whether he will return to being Batman has arrived. If not for the Joker, Bruce may have surrendered to his nihilism and discarded the cowl for good, but the Joker unknowingly teaches Bruce how to find meaning in tragedy. And in doing so, the Joker shows both the reader and Bruce what makes Batman, Batman. Cool, totally a huge part of the base joy you get from reading Batman. But all three stories have a closing punch, a short sequence in the story's close where a small part of who Batman is is turned just slightly and everything the character has traditionally been understood to be is gone, and we have a new, better, more 21st century Batman.